Hey, guys. Good evening, guys. All right. Welcome, everybody, to FMA Discussion. This is episode 129, and tonight is going to be more theme-based in that we will be looking at a couple different uh, news and topics to talk about. So this won't be the general uh, platform where we're getting bios on, on the guests and, and so forth. However, though, these gentlemen have been previously on. So if you do want to see their episodes where they were just uh, featured, so respectively, episodes 98 for Tuhan Bill, if you wanted to see Guru Tom Pena, respectively, episodes 46 and 49. And they were all, of course, great episodes. So if you would like to see them when they were featured, those are the episodes. Okay, tonight's focus is going to be on the Galley of Knife. We're going to view that, how it uh, changed, you know, the lens through that, what's legal to carry, knowing your laws, the forms of that, and we're going to go through the ethics of teaching knife and all that. So uh, stay tuned. I hope you enjoy, and uh, we're going to get started. So uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on, both of you. It's Guru Tom and Tuan Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. us. So I'm, I'm really starting to dig these theme episodes. I like the other ones, but these theme, I think there's something behind these theme episodes. You know, first, Brody. Exposure, educating, and you know, within the you know, within the kind of the confines of uh, FMA, have you, you know? And we already got a bunch. Yes, yeah, so if you are watching, please tell us where you're watching from and hit that like button. And we already got Felix from Texas, Maestro Alvin from San Francisco. All right, hey guys. So, okay, so we're gonna jump right into it, folks. Since we have a bunch of things to cover, and so we're gonna um, okay, current law. So. Both of these gentlemen had sent me um, some articles, one that Tuan Bill wrote himself, and Guru Tom, where did you access your information from? Uh, is that off a government site? Or? Yeah, it is. It's, it's from a government site, and they're basically okay. the latest uh, directives or advice when it comes to self-defense. Yeah, no, they were both extremely helpful, so I thank you both for sending them. Um, so let's go over. All right, current law. So um, let's start... Uh, Tuan Bill, uh, now I have uh, Tuan Bill worked in the court system for 30 years, but also um, knows, I mean, about some of the various states, different laws and guidelines and all that, much more than I know. And um, and we're going to go over that. So uh, Tuan Bill, just uh, current laws and why, where they are in your particular state and how they vary between the city and the rest of New York and other states that maybe you could compare and contrast to. And then... Um, Secondly, why it's important for the people that carry knives, why they should know this. So what, uh, so what say you? Well, in, um, I started my career in New York City as a court officer. And down there, uh, you could only, the knives had to be under four inch blade length. Um, and that's probably one of the reasons that Tuangahe, when he started training uh, our guys with knife uh, in the late 70s, uh, started with um, a knife held in ice pick grip because that's the best functional way to use a small pocket knife. It's not that that's the best way to use a knife. It's just the best way to use that size knife. So he was trying as best he could to stay under, stay into legalities, you know, to a certain mm -hmm. extent. And he's basically he's looking at, okay, what are the guys actually carrying? All right, I'm going to teach them how to defend themselves with that tool. Um. New York State, as far as it goes, uh, there's no length limit in New York State. What it says is it cannot be, uh, the law says not specific knives, a dirk, a dagger, a poniard, um, a switchblade, a ballistic knife, you know, the type you push the button, the Spetsnaz knife, mm. the blade at you off a spring, uh, things like that. Or you cannot have, in the law, it says list all these knives are forbidden, or a dangerous knife. And so I read that, and uh, I'm thinking, that's very vague. So I went to one of the judges I was working with and basically brought a bunch of knives with me, dumped them out on his desk, and said, okay, judge, uh, tell me which ones are legal, which are not, because I, you know, all knives are dangerous. I can mm. you know, do something terrible to you with a butter knife, you know, if you hit the right spot. Yeah, right, right. <clears throat> and he said, basically, the way, the way the law, the judges have interpreted that is if a knife does not have a sporting or work purpose. So I had oh, a, okay. Okay. Seven and a half inch Bowie knife on the table. It had a false back edge, a clip point, 
but it was not sharpened. He said, yeah, you use that for camping. That's not a problem. He pointed to the little karambit with a three-inch blade on the table and said that would be a problem because that's only meant for fighting. Yeah, four-inch difference. One yeah. that can access center so much quicker. Yeah. Straight yeah. Across, I suppose. Wow. Wow. Um, so what I would tell people uh, mm -hmm. in general is you have to look at your state law, but that's not enough. You have to go to yeah. a, a, a lawyer or a couple experienced cops. Sergeant is usually the best guy to ask for these kind of things. Um, and ask, what, how is the legal interpretation by the judges of the laws? Uh, in uh, Texas, uh, before the current law, the length limit for a concealed blade was five and a half inches. Uh, they had a cop get attacked by a guy who pulled out a knife and came to stab him, and the cop shot him, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 feet away. And there was some, um, I think, charged by the bad guy's uh, defense attorney that, uh, you know, you shouldn't have shot him with, with a, if he had a, a five-inch blade. It was a four-inch blade, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so the judge trying to cover the cop said, all right, well, that the whole knife is more than five and a half inches. And that's all oh, putting hand. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The whole knife is more than five and a half inches, but the law didn't say the knife. The law said the blade. So mm. the, the judge in Texas, this is, I think in the nineties trying to cover the cop more than he needed to, because the guy's charging at you with a knife. I just say, I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, and that's back when we had uh, Turner and Bayarta as the main defensive tactics instructor for the uh, state of Texas Academy down there. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they knew, you know, uh, how dangerous knives were, but the, the judges were trying to cover the cop. I kind of understand that, but he didn't have to go in that weird direction. He didn't have to go in that stance. To yeah, kind he didn't of have to go in that weird direction. Guys charging with a knife, you stop him 10 feet away. You mm -hmm. know, that's half a second from killing you. That's what I mean. Like what you know, what is it? The, the twenty foot the twenty foot one really twenty one foot twenty one twenty one. The yeah. Twiler drill Twiler drill was a um I wanna say Missouri cop uh but he uh, he had a police officer, state trooper down there, and he tried to find out how quickly could a man cover ground mm -hmm. uh, before you could put a, a round into him. And he came up with this general rule of, of twenty one or general guideline. You know, I say it's, a, yeah. it's not marked in stone of no, yeah. feet. Yeah. Um, so what I would encourage people to do, and then I'll break, uh, is look at state law, look at local law. Like if you live in New York City, uh, it's different than there's more exclusions than there are. are they're more rigid than New York State. Mm. If you live in a city, they're more rigid than the than state. Suburban or... Yeah. In, yeah. in San Antonio, Texas, at one time, you could not have a lockback knife. Uh, so the, the liner locks got very popular down there. You know, mm. so, um, so anyway, you have to look at your local municipality. What laws do they have? You have to look at state law. Then you have to filter that through how the judges have interpreted those laws. Mm. Tom, imagine things are really <laughs> restrictive yeah. in uh, England. Who, Tom? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Um, overall, what you would like to add to what Juan Bill said, or is it completely different on your side of the ocean? Well, um, we actually, I was, I can say now that I'm on the wrong side of the pond, <laughs> being, a, be, being somebody who used to, at one point, um, advocate, um, I would say, uh, being bringing of blades because mm. I came from the Philippines and situations there is very different coming over was uh wasn't really much a shock to the system but i have to i have to understand i have to uh, completely adapt to the mm. to the laws here like for example um in general uh you cannot bring any blade um in public okay unless basically this is there's england correct england this correct. is england yeah as long as basically you've got a you've got a reason, it's part of your job. So it could be a multi-tool, it, it can be a machete, but as long as it's part of your job. Or 
uh, there are certain uh, religious sects here that basically they're allowed to bring their blade as part of their uh, costume, as part like of their culture. Yeah, ceremonial blades. A Sikh okay? or a kirpan. Yeah, a Sikh, yeah. So they're, they're allowed to do that in public. You can, collection is one thing, but generally you're not, uh, you're, you're basically not allowed, or you're, they're being, um, uh, we are being discouraged to bring any blade in the public. So even though by law, you've got a, like a, if your blade is under three inches and it's not locking, so it's like a slip joint, um, but, and it should be, it cannot be op operated by one hand, like gravity or flick or something. Uh, it should be like, oper it should be opened by two hands. So there's still, by law it's allowed, but it's still, uh, the police are still going to be sometimes heavy handed on that one if, if, if they, if they, uh, if they see you or if they chance upon you, seeing you, searching you, uh, basically having that kind of uh, blade with you. So um, you can say that, yeah, I'm allowed to do this. You can contest it, but sometimes the situation won't actually go your way. So, um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite tricky, actually. Yeah, but in general, you can. Yeah. Just, you mentioned the Philippines. I think it'd be neat. If you can just give some compare and contrast, because over there, it's okay, right? I'm, I'm, I'm well, assuming, well, actually, I'm not saying I know for sure. Nope, actually, yeah. no, it's not. But oh, okay. the thing okay. is, no, it's not. It's, it's also illegal, but the problem is people can, people can get away with it. Okay. okay. And it's a but, different city in the provinces too, right, Tom? Yes, yes, yeah. And I mean, I grew up, I grew up in Tondo, Manila, and I know that, Mondo. Um, I know that basically, yeah, Tondo, Manila. So it's a very, uh, it's a very challenging place as far I as heard violence is concerned. Yeah. About that place. Yeah. So, I mean, even, even I would say my first, my, my introduction to, to fighting with, with, with blades, to defending yourself with blades mm -hmm. eh, or, or shanks or anything, anything with weapon actually came from the streets of uh, Tondo. So it wasn't really through martial arts. Okay, so my understanding how it works, how 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 basically um, what you do and everything, it basically came from from the, from that part. And people carry, especially during mm. during the seventies, the eighties. Okay, um, I mean, uh, uh, you you still have like a lot of um, uh, mugging that are still still happening over there, but. Unlike before, okay? Um, then, yeah, then coming over here, it's just really completely different. And it's actually not just only blades. That um, um, it also, it also uh, pertains to any kind of self-defense weapon that you can okay. carry. Now, especially if they are basically marketed for self-defense, you, you can you, you you can be you you can be warned with it or you can go to jail with it as well. So like for really? example, pepper pepper spray. Now that's a no no. Um, in in in, in England. Yeah, yeah. So for the, like the uh, the uh, what's this? Kumtan? The yawaras or the Palm yeah the Yeah. Nothing. Huh? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's they're very strict here. Okay, because. Uh, they, the the idea is basically they don't they don't want to they they don't want to encourage like vigilantism, okay, or trying to like resolve things with violence. No, taking matters in your own hands. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So I mean, yeah. Like I think in the in the seventies, you've got bali songs, baseball bats, and all those okay. all all, all, place, all the right? weapons that you basically <laughs> that was used for riots and maybe hooligans. Um, uh, gang, gang, a, a fan wars from football and everything. So they oh, basically, yeah. They, okay. yeah, they, 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 uh, they prohibited it. Well, because so, of the outbreaks at the uh, soccer games, yes. and I've, yep. I've seen yep. some of them. Man. They get freaking. Yeah, yeah. So um, practically, um, it, like for example, if now if I teach uh, self defense, I can't actually 
tell my students to bring a kobotan. Oh, for even <laughs> because practice that's for them. No, no, for even practice sakes. Oh, I didn't even. Yeah. I, didn't even I mean, we can huh. we can use it for practice. Right, but, but they just but then bringing it could be an issue. Bringing it is another thing. Yep. Nope. Nope. It's a no no. A small so, uh, pocket torch. That's the same size. Pocket. Be okay. Come on, do that, it. that will be okay. Primary purposes as a flashlight yeah. for the torch. Not yeah, a, exactly. A yeah. Or, or a pen. Okay. But you also have to be careful with a pen because a some of the. Like, like, a tactical pen. A tactical pen. The problem with that is because uh, some of them, they're very. Um, they look tactical. Mean to look at. Yeah, very tactical to look at. And because they are basically uh, marketed as a tool for self-defense, that is that is a gray area as well. Yeah. So sometimes oh. you can get away with it. Yeah. yeah there's a compare and contrast right there. Yeah, one there you go. Can get away with one would not. Yeah. I can. I still have them, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I still have my. I, uh, not to go up here. Just, both of you are presenting incredibly well. Thank you. Um, I still have that little set I bought from you, John Bill. It came with the rope, the tactical pen, the palm stick, and all that. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Man, that was mm. like the best money I ever spent, man. Come <laughs> 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 on, Bill. What do you think of what um, cool Tom's saying over there? I mean, I have a question for you, Tom. So sure. I know um, in a lot of areas, how you dress and how you present yourself makes a big difference. Yes. So a businessman with an attache case. If he has a Swiss Army knife, that's the blade is under three inches. Probably the cops are not going to bother him. If it's if, a, it is, if yeah. it's a rough looking guy in rough clothing, and mm. he's got a two inch knife, the cops yep. can give him a harder time. Yes, and somebody looks like a normal, legitimate citizen. So yeah. a lot of what you wear and what how you wear yourself and how you and how you carry and it as well. Carry. Yeah. So basically, if they see that you can you can immediately get it from your pocket and immediately deploy it, that is kind of questionable. Ah, okay. So oh, as well. just oh, yeah. that fact, oh. maybe you've got a clip yeah. and they see it, yeah. on your, right? Yes. As opposed to maybe yeah. having a clip in your pocket where it's not seen. I got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. We went wow. through this little dance years ago in New York City, where there was a there was a difference. They didn't want they they. They didn't want you with a concealed knife, or then they wanted you with it could not be exposed um, concealed. So if it was concealed, uh, they were more strict with the four inch rule than if it was exposed. Then you had all these bikers walking around with a a knife on their hip and scaring people. And then the old ladies were complaining to City Hall, and they said, "No, we don't want you to have it exposed. Now you have to conceal it." And it went back and forth like that for a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I was talking to you the other day. Politicians, the one skill they have uh, that they're experts in is how to get reelected. Everything yeah. else, but not very good. <clears throat> Some really dumb laws out there that, yeah. you know, ought, do not make practical sense. They're, they really um, are not well written. Um, but the regular citizens have to live under them. And, you know, one thing I tell my That's students, the thing. you have to know the law, you have to know how the law is interpreted, and you have to look at these things not at, not reading the law and say, like a lawyer, oh, what can I do in this situation? What can I get away with? Mm. You actually have to look at a self-defense situation and say, what must I do at the minimum to escape yes. the situation? <clears throat> and exactly. you have that bare minimum you need to escape the situation and you will either be under the law or under, you will at least be under the moral law yeah. and you'll do better mm -hmm. if you do, you probably yeah. will do it no matter what. Um, but at least you have a better legal leg to stand on and yeah. you're less likely to get in trouble. Exactly. Than yeah, if because you, if you think you're going to outlawyer the lawyers and the legislature <laughs> and say, okay, I'm yeah. I, if I do this, you know, then I can, you know, I'll, if I see the guy on my porch, I'll shoot him and I drag him in the house. <laughs> my knuckleheads I've heard on, on various internet places saying dumb stuff like that. And they put it out there forever for everyone to hear. Very good. Mm -hmm. way to look at yeah. it, guys. It's, yeah. you know, 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, uh, be, the, the same. Uh, this is similar, I think, between the states and and here. Within the stipulation of self defense, we are basically given this first part of the phrase: "We may use reasonable force." Reasonable. Okay, and and it is very important for for us to understand that the word "may" mm -hmm. is there. So it's not you should use no, reasonable it's not force. You can. It's or you may. can. You Huge. may yes, that's that's but that basically has a, a a difference in in using it and of course, uh, sometimes it could be reasonable force or minimum force. So basically, within the law, it's kind of like thinking that okay, you have to use the the minimum and then try to hopefully adjust to the situation because, I mean, uh, self defense could be there. You could be in either two of these situations. It is a social, uh, a, a social uh, attack, which basically may, may, be, may be stemmed from like a confrontation, or it is a social, which is basically when you're being mugged. So the level of violence involved in, in those two scenarios are basically different. But regardless, like Tuhon Bill said, you should be able to articulate what you did in court and, and be able to stand... Yeah, be, yeah, why you did it and be able to stand scrutiny. Because yeah, right, be able to defend the To defend yourself, yes. Forces yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, because in court, it's not going to be, uh, it's either you're guilty or innocent. It's basically you're guilty or not guilty. Yeah, yeah, innocent, right, yeah, 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 the innocent. Well, yes. just on, on the self-defense, well, because you know, actually we can just jump into that now and that's fine. Uh, Chuan Bill, from the self-defense perspective, uh, you know, what does one need uh, to take into account? I mean, like you, uh, Google Tom kind of were, were already touched upon this, but from your lens and being in the court all those years, and you teaching, I mean, what, is, what does one need to take into account from the self-defense perspective? God forbid they had to use it. All right. Um, imagine that the confrontation is fully recorded uh, by two or three people with their cell phones, yeah. uploaded Where's on God, YouTube like... <laughs> way, before, <laughs> well, way before you ever get to court. And the jury's going to see this. From crazy? And they're going to hear everything you say, everything the bad guy says, and everything afterwards. Um, so picture the scenario like that. What we used to teach at the academy was uh, the phrase we called verbal judo for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. And it was how to extract, how to de-escalate as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> one, you don't want to get into a fight. And you know, when I started, it was a height mm -hmm. of the AIDS epidemic and crack epidemic. You really want to, did not want to put your hands on people. No. You know, yeah. you know so, sure. uh, and the other thing is most of the time when we put hands on a bad guy, his lawyer or his family was right next to them. So, you know, you got to be squeaky clean. So what mm -hmm. you should do uh, is like you had a guy mouthing off in the audience at court talking. They're not supposed to be talking loudly. So what I used to do and tell the, the academy recruits to do is, you know, you give one or two warnings. And then if they don't listen, you know, general warning to the whole audience. Then you go over to the guy and say, look, guy, you don't want to get in trouble. Why don't you give me your name? Go right outside. I know it's a long, you're bored. You don't want to hang out for this, go wait outside when your case is called, I'll go out in the hallway and get you. And he either says yes or no to that. If he says yes, you go outside when the guy calls, you go, uh, he's outside, judges. And the judge knows if you sent him outside, why? So they're going to take that into account when they talk to the guy. The other thing is, if he says no and you got to physically remove him, all the people around him, you just went up in there. As, well, yeah, the officer tried at least to get be reasonable with this guy, but he was an ugly mm -hmm. You'll get at least somebody on your side. Yeah, that saw it from the yeah, lawyers are looking like yeah. yeah, the officer was really patient. Mm -hmm. I know Tom, your area, uh, London particularly, but I think most big cities in UK, there are cameras everywhere. You cannot yes, CCTV yes. square cent centimeter of side exactly. or street exactly. on a camera. Oh, no, right? really? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's common. Huh? Oh, wow. okay. okay, it's very common here. Yeah. George oh, Orwell well, is rolling over in his grave when he, if he yeah. comes to England these days. George, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. So what? Um, okay. Um, huh. 
Tom, what do you have to say uh, on that? You know, uh, from a self-defense perspective, you know, like, what do you want to take into account? I mean, like, we're going to bounce back uh, to Tuan Bill on this as well, because we're going to look at like, legally, financially, morally, and all that. But what do you uh, what do you have to say for in regards to what Tuan Bill mentioned? As far as your country, mind, I guess. Um. Yeah, actually, it's 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 very very it's it's the same actually. Okay, um, it, uh, because what you need to think is, um, if you get into an altercation, okay, so let's 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 basically say first, it's an altercation. You 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 started from a verbal confrontation, okay, so, um, and then you you had an altercation, um. During the altercation, even we say you um, you did defend you did defended yourself. Okay, you threw the punch, and the person landed landed flat on the floor. Okay, but the problem is, of course, during that time that the person landed unconscious on the floor, there there are going to be injuries that is going to sustain. Okay, so you might be able to defend yourself. The chayap, this is that is basically I, I I did defend myself, but what you what you have to remember is uh, you're going to have two 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 kinds of uh, legal battle. You've got the criminal one, mm-hmm. where you basically have to defend yourself against that that you def, uh, that you did it out of self defense, and the other was the civil one, and oh, that is basically so the good. opposite person, the other, the other person basically suing you. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a lot of stress as well. Um, and because of this, it, you might end up actually having to, to experience a lot of change in your life. If, if, you, if, um, if he won the civil case, then you have to pay. Yeah, well. that amount too. I mean, like exactly. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this as an example. One of my... One of my friend has an office mate. Uh, his office mate basically got into an altercation. He defended himself. Um, he didn't throw the first punch, but his punch connected. So the person went backwards. The back of his head uh, hit the gutter. Okay, so the, the person, the, the other guy basically went to a coma. So... No. no. It, because of this, uh, his, um, his office mate actually lost his job, and he has been in, in jail for nearly two years until he was clear that it was really self-defense. Two years. But two years. Yeah, nearly two years. So um, just imagine the amount of stress that that guy, that person, and the family went through. I and can't. even... Yeah, even even though basically he was released after after nearly two years, okay, uh, and he was cleared of the case, he has to basically uh, defend himself for from another one, the civil case. Oh, so that was a I lot of stress, a lot of a lot of it. yes, a lot of money. So this is this is basically one of the things that uh, sometimes um, self defense instructors nowadays miss. They they only look at they only look at basically uh, that particular situation when you have to defend yourself, but they don't actually look after beyond the situation. No, beyond the scope. No, because at that time no. you're not seeing that. You're caught up in this yeah. emotion. You're caught up okay. in this anxiety. Yeah, and... I mean it's 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 different mm-hmm. when it is basically a an a a, an, a social type of situation when you're being mugged. Or it was a case of home invasion. That's completely different. Yeah, right. They bring your house. Or... Yeah, but if it is like you went through what we call as a monkey dance, okay, you went through that stage, and yeah. even though, uh, I mean, you, you can't it, 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 for you to call it self defense when when jury would say, well, if you had a chance to actually to avoid it, to walk away from the situation, why didn't you? No, that's I mean, going to be that's going to be like. Ugh. Sure, yeah, bring that point yeah. up to the guys, uh, especially who live in states that have what's known as a stand your ground laws. So mm. most most areas have what's called the castle doctrine. Your home is your castle. Some breaks into your home, especially at night. 
they're not there to swipe your TV and run away. They're there to yeah. Yeah, yeah. potentially so, do something. Make some fire. repairs. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but there are some states where you, could, if you have a right to be in public on a certain spot, you legally have a right to defend yourself. Hmm. What I tell people is, you know, don't rely on that being able to sway a jury. You know, you, you at least make an attempt to get out of the situation. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I, yes. You know, you know, we're misunderstood exactly. here. That's true. I apologize, but, you know, and then back out of it. At yep. least make an attempt to get out of the situation. You know, the other thing I wanted to mention is it was we, we were talking on uh, one of the old self-defense uh, FMA forums, and people were talking about the fights they've been in, mostly guys. Mm -hmm. And nine times out of ten, this fight story started with, I was in this bar and... Yeah, right. Guy, I was in a bar. Yeah. Saying, Don't go into <laughs> bars. Um, so, you know, you really... I, one more example I want to give you. There was a, a case in New York where two guys got into a street fight. And the guy had... I think I worked... Yeah, I worked this trial. It was in Manhattan. And the guy had steel-toed cowboy boots on. It had his little um, stainless steel pointy thing on the tip of his toe, right? And I think he might even had like fake spurs on or something. But the guy attacked him. It was a mutual fight. If, if they just punched each other's nose and, you know, somebody went home bloody, it was no big deal. But he did like a, a spinning kick and caught the guy right in the temple with the metal heel and killed him. Ooh. And he ended up in prison for that. And obviously, he did. That That's was, not that what he wanted meditated. to happen. If he had done oh. that with regular shoes, he would. Yeah, the DA said, "You know, we would have. It would have been an accident. There was kind of a time a one punch rule. Mm. If you hit somebody one time and they fall down, and it's a, just a mutual fight, two young guys being knuckleheads, and he, the guy falls and hits his head, and he gets he dies from that. They don't consider premeditated premeditated murder." Mm. Uh, they they may or may not back then consider it manslaughter, uh, mm. depending on circumstances. But there was that kind of general feeling in the DA's office that if it was only from one punch, yeah, I hit his head falling down. We're not going to yeah, charge yeah. manslaughter on that. Now they do. They've really gotten more in the deep end, but mm. um, so the, the the way I relate to to knives is I tell my students. Don't carry a knife that's designed as a fighting knife. Exactly. Carry a knife that's going to be good for the 99.999% of the time. You know, carry, with it. carry work. Yeah. And then, you know, use know how to use that work knife as a self-defense tool if you need it. Um, and you may choose work knives that could also be used as, in a self-defense situation. Uh, if you needed to, that's a lot based on the handle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, um, that's true. So there's a reason we, there's a, there's a practical reason and a legal reason why we teach empty hand versus knife first, uh, in our schools, because one, as a good guy, it's more likely you're going to be attacked with a knife that's not in your hand, you know, yeah. with a, mm -hmm. a bad guy attacking you with a knife, then you attack when you have a knife in your hand. You're not there, you know, cutting boxes to put it fit in the garbage can and somebody's going to try to mug you with a knife, you know, when you have a knife in your hand. Usually it's in your pocket, wherever it is. Yeah. So you need empty hand versus knife first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing yes. is uh, in terms of gross motion, uh, a little four inch blade pocket knife is not a good fight stop. You can't hit a guy in the form with that, lop off his arm and the fight's over. Yeah. You know, nope. <laughs> he's probably you know, he's gotten cut, you know. So it's not it's not a fight stopper, a cut no, it's not. knife. It's so particularly depending on clothing, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Clothing, you'd be surprised how hard. I mean, right? If you yeah. got a down coat on yeah. and all this, yeah. doesn't mean you're getting through all that. And exactly. No, nope, not necessarily. Is. Yeah. 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 So we start with empty hand versus knife because that's probably how you're going to be attacked. You have empty hand, the bag has knife. Mm. The other thing is. Uh, the mechanics of empty hand versus knife tie in well with your defense knife to knife with a small forged blade, a pocket knife. And I'll even take them through a lot of times a, a palm stick or flashlight uh, training so that, uh, you know, we used to tell guys, 
before we really had the small flashlights available, take your pocket knife. You know, you go to your, um, let's see, I don't have a small one on me. You have your pocket knife. We'll say this is the pocket knife. You have the pocket knife in your hand. Uh, Here we are. Uh, closed. You have your pocket knife in your hand closed. And you have your keys, car keys in your left hand. If somebody jumps you, mm. you, know, you, you might hit his arm out of the way with the closed handle of the pocket the knife. Fist, yeah. And then mm. you can assess, you know, how serious is it? Is this a drunk being stupid or is this a mugger trying to, you know, actually do you some harm? Mm. Uh, and on that subject, here's another one. You know, obviously, as a, as a retired officer, um, I can carry a firearm across the United States. Um, so, when I'm in Europe, obviously, I cannot. Can't, most places in Europe, I can't carry even a pocket knife. So, I have a pocket flashlight. I'll have, you know, some other things that are legal. But what I also carry is like an old... Uh, old um, hotel card. It looks like a you know, those plastic keys they have at the hotels now. Oh, okay, that's a ticket from somewhere. But I'll I'll carry one of those and I'll wrap a couple of euros on it, um, and I'll put a rubber band on it, and that that's in my front left pocket away from my regular money. And if somebody mugs me, I'll take that. Okay, take my money. Boom. Oh, oh, clever. Away. Oh, that's clever. Um. You need, you know, like a lizard just drops its tail when a predator comes to it. There's some lizards that do that. You need some drop money. You need something to get. Yes. Away. It's a junk. Yes. Oh, yes. do I get this money or do I chase him and maybe he has more money on you? You mm. know, it might do both, but at least you've gotten a chance to get a car between yeah. you and the bad guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Or that you can close the door and hold it closed. Yeah. Um, you know, get somewhere. It gives you a bit of an advantage, or you know, I was in Rome, and uh, I think I made my first trip to Rome. And it was bright sunlit area. I was in a big, broad uh, street with a lot of shops on it, and I got this. You know, my New York spider sense was tingling. I looked behind me. There's a little guy shorter than me, but he's a very broad, muscular guy, younger guy, with a like a, a soccer team jersey on. And I said, this guy's father, because I looked back and he would like get interested in the the wood shop all the mm -hmm. stuff, you know, and stop whatever he's doing and look at the, the shops. And so what I did instead of confront him, you know, if uh in New York with my badge and my gun, you know, especially when I was working, I would have got my back up against the wall and waited for him to come by. Can I, can I help you? You know. But over there I just, I went into a store and you know, transitioning from the bright sunlight into the dark store, I went in to over by the counter of the store, turn around and face the front. And he, you see the guy walk in, and his eyes adjust, and he sees me staring at him, and he just kind of, <laughs> and they took off out of the store. Oh, yeah, okay. He's okay. probably going to yeah. do a bump and grab kind of a pickpocket thing rather than a mm. you know, hugging them broad daylight. But that's the type of thing that you have to be aware of. Two more examples mm. of, of what I call active camouflage. A uh, a uh, student I had uh, was a stockbroker. He had a, uh, uh, but he was also an army veteran, a uh, combat veteran of the first Gulf War. And he had a aunt who was living in uh, a bad neighborhood. And he came, would, would visit her once a month, bring her groceries, check on her. And he would go into the uh, building and there's a little alcove where all the mailboxes are for the, uh, for the apartment buildings, apartments, right? And there's a bare light bulb in the ceiling hanging by a wire. And he went upstairs, brought the groceries to the ant. And then as he's leaving, he's going down the stairs and he, the light bulb is off. Now, a lot of times they'll, the people with junkies will steal a light bulb or if someone's in the apartment, then the light goes out, they'll even go mm. steal the light bulb. But he wasn't, you know, he wanted to be careful, took his pocket flashlight out uh, and shined it down into the alcove. And as he's shining it there, he sees a zombie come out, you know, a vagrant come out or something. And he goes, can I help you, sir? Uh, uh, no, officer. Uh, uh, yes. he took off. The guy's not a cop. But in New York, there's only one type of person who calls bad guys, sir. Shine the flashlight in his eyes. You know, the powerful 
flashlights we have now, you know, a thousand lumens. Yeah, yeah. Mm. A thousand lumens, yeah. yeah. So another case, uh, a female officer was loading her car with groceries in a parking lot. And um, she's in a shorts and a tank top and a fanny pack. Tom, in at UK, they call those bum bags. Uh, bum bags, yeah, bum bags. Yeah, because fanny, fanny has a different connotation here, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So anyway, she sees this rough looking guy walking back and forth, back and forth, and he's going the aisles and he's coming closer and closer to her. So instead of like loading a car, hurry and, and take off, because she doesn't have time for that, right? Which is what a lot of people would do. She puts the bag back in the shopping cart, turns and faces him, unzips the top of the fanny pack with her left hand, puts her right hand in the fanny pack, says, can I help you, sir? Uh, guy took off. <laughs> he did have mm. it. But yeah. the guy, the, she didn't take the gun out. Mm. She faced him. She got somewhat into a shooting stance, just taking the left leg forward and, and, and just being very just that little bit of one half step forward, facing the mm. guy directly, look him right mm. in the eye. Can I help you, sir? For yeah, days. it's really <laughs> assurance and yeah. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's okay. I got of, um, out of it. I got two questions here from before we get into the next. I'm going to definitely get to your questions, Andrew. But one's going to have to just wait till we get into the teaching. But um, and then I'm going to get the one for two on Bill after this. But at uh, um, in before before you ask the question, can I um, I need to just uh, add something to what the oh, one? Please do. All right. Yes, right. I mean, uh, um, when I teach like defense, because um, I really wanted to to be able to teach self defense initially FMA, but as, as I've said, uh, last night I said a lot of people are worried about studying FMA. Uh, for self-defense because of the reputation. Yes. They, they view it as something either um, uh, legal counterproductive, okay? It won't mm -hmm. help them with their legal They see it as uh, too violent. So there's okay. a problem. Okay, so that's why we started offering the um, Surviving a Knife Attack course, okay? Or, although we, we have quite a lot of the effort, um, practices or concepts, drills and everything in there, but we, we want, to, we, we want really to, to offer it in such a way that it's, um, it's more, in, I would say, inclusive or people would be able to like to, to, to adjust to it more because the, the problem that we have is um, people have their own belief system and how they they would basically take take up martial arts or self defense mm. depend on their belief system. Okay, so it's going to be a case of would I really be able to do this? And if you teach them some, if if they if you offer if you teach them something, uh, a, a course them to hold weapon, it's like there's no way I'll be able to hold any weapon during this type of uh, situation. So you already have that kind of dissonance between the students and uh, and your course and and your your, your curriculum or something. So the, the same as this, like what uh, I did, also start with with uh, empty hand. Empty hand, okay. Because, yeah, yeah. yeah, because uh, if you look at it, really, especially if you're whether it is going to be social uh, type of attack or asocial. Mm. Basically, you are the type of person who really prepares it. I mean, but that's going to be another, another, another thing. Um, most of the time, you'll be caught uh, empty-handed. Okay. So you have, to, you have to learn to defend yourself first with uh, empty hand. Now, as far as, for example, drawing a weapon, um, even though we basically we, we teach them how to, how to draw their weapon during basically during the, during the fight okay, say during the pressure. Okay. not every not yeah but not everybody will be able to withstand that pressure and that's the reason why we 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 put them under and to make them realize that basically look oh, good on you it's not, not actually, under pressure it's, yeah it's yeah exactly so it's not easy it is not as easy as uh, easier oh, uh, it's no, not that no, easy no. done okay so mm. especially under pressure now 
uh, for example, like when we when we teach, like um, trying to de-escalate, we always try to 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 emphasize, especially if this is a confrontation or a social confrontation, try to de-escalate it as much as you can. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've got hands up. Okay, and whenever you say, um, "Be cool," I don't want anything to do with you. Make sure that you already establish the distance. Yeah, so yeah. That, don't, don't try to do it and stay on the spot because why? Mm. He keeps on move, He keeps on coming closer to you, and basically you're 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 already getting into his punching range or the person's attacking range. Right. Yeah. Yep. And also for those people who are recording the video. Okay, and the mm, CCTV, everybody's you. already seeing right. you're trying to calm him down. No, excellent, okay? excellent. All right. Now, of course, we have the question of preemptive punch. Some would say you have to allow him to punch you first before you punch back. Not necessarily. Even in the laws in the UK, that, there, is no, but, right. there is no such thing as uh, allowing people to punch you first before you punch back. So... We can do preemptive punch. Uh, we can do preemptive punch, but as long as, as I said, there is the threat. If you, right. if you right. honestly, if you honestly believe that your life is in danger, okay, and this, 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 the circumstances basically, um, basically, tells you that you have to throw the first punch, otherwise mm. you're gonna be dead. Then you can do it. So, but at least coming from here. Okay, you're trying to 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 de-escalate the situation. He keeps on coming no. forward. Okay, Absolutely. and then you, you already see two of his friends trying to go around you to flank you. Then what are you gonna do? Then you have to do it. Okay, so there. And then as far as weapons, yeah, we um, one of the things that we uh, we actually ask them to 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 uh, use most of the time is like the, the, the torch. And you have already established. Am I cut? I can hear you. Okay. So. Yeah, no, no, you're good. yeah because I, the I'm, thing I'm is. I'm looking at the questions as I go back and forth between you guys. Yeah. And because the, uh, yeah, the torch is something that you can use uh, as, a, as an ordinary tool. Plus, because, because of the high lumen now of the torches, you can yeah. actually use this even at a distance. So to be able to use it as like a, a mobile barrier between you and your attacker. So you can blind the, the person even though they're no, quite they're far. So bright. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. So you can basically hold it slightly low and then bring it up if you if you feel that the threat is actually is actually yeah. that uh, yeah. So that is that that that's basically how we 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 incorporate the weapon. But yeah, we we if we we if we go to that stage that we teach like the the deployment of the torch, the deployment of the mm. weapon, then yeah, we do include them in the stress test mm. and basically okay. give them different uh, different ways of carrying it or because basically preparing to use it or something. Then we try to also like vary it from person to person. So that's why we, we really emphasize the stress test because it, it allows the participant to discover uh, what their weaknesses and their strengths are. So we can mm. we can help them modify how to carry certain things like the torch. So it 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 basically like for example, if they need to carry it traveling from from their place of work going to the to their car in the car park, they have to carry it rather than basically leaving it inside their bag. Yeah, and then, and then the pressure they're going to get out of there with ten other exactly. things trying to find yeah. it. So yeah, so yeah, so and that's that's the reason. Why, yeah. a, uh... In daytime, they can carry an umbrella. Yeah, they might exactly. Those in London, yeah. which is basically very common in the UK. Yeah, yes. by, by virtue <laughs> of the weather. <laughs> so, um, you have a patriot on your of yours, uh, Clive Turner, uh, mentioned a, a good book from Mark McYoung, talking about the aftermath of the fight. Mm, yeah, and I haven't okay. read that book, but I've I've talked to Mark online, and I think we're in the same mind on some things. Um. You got to do like all the all the uh, firearms training we do. We always have a first aid class with that. Yes. And yeah, we do as well. Big difference between if an officer shoots a bad guy and stands there looking at him, and you know, oh, okay, I'm okay. Uh, you okay? Yeah, okay. Or 
you know, after they get the handcuffs on, they realize, oh, this guy's shot in the heart, and they start doing CPR on him. Yeah. He put the guy dead in the heart, and you're not getting a pulse, and you're pretty sure this guy's dead. The mm. fact that you're doing CPR on him, and all the witnesses are seeing, you're at least trying to keep him alive. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 You've got, like, a duty of care. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, even, even in our courses, we do the Stop the Bleed. Yeah. So we teach our participants how to use tourniquet, how to how yeah. to do packing, how to do uh, direct pressure, and all those things. Yes. Yeah. Good stuff. So uh, the other thing, though, is with uh, especially with civilians in a without area, they don't have backup. They don't have an armed backup with them like an officer would. You got to judge the situation. The best uh, yeah. for you to do may be to leave the scene. You know, if you win the fight, leave the scene, get into a yes. bullet store, something like that. Yeah, place. exactly. Uh, this guy just tried to attack me with a knife. Uh, I'm holding the door closed. Store owner, can you look at my back? Am I bleeding? Do you see any blood in my clothing? Because mm. a lot of times mm. you don't feel it. You don't feel yeah. it, actually, right? Yeah. No, you won't. Oh, because... guy attacked me with a knife. He's still out there. You don't have to yeah. get details about what you may or may not have done to the bad guy. But yeah. this guy tried to attack me with a knife. He's still out there. Call the police. Check my back. You see blood on my clothing, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of times these days, they in especially in rough neighborhoods, people will see an altercation between two guys, one who's from the neighborhood and the other who's not, even though the other guy was mugging you, trying to rob you, and he's the bad guy. The fact that you're from not you're not from that you're neighborhood. From the neighbor, yeah. You them to you, you're the bad guy yes. in there. Yeah. You see, so, you know, there's a lot of danger. There's a lot of complex things going on mm. that are not in That's your true. reading of the law. It looks yeah. like cut and dried when you read the law. Yeah. A lot going on. There's a lot of factors you have to put into consideration. Mark, yeah. Mark, Juan uh, Bill, I got a, a lot of good uh, books and articles on this subject, on after action stuff. Uh, Masada Ayub is excellent. Uh, he has, uh, it's mostly shooting related on uh, Ayub's. Uh, but the general principles are there from the law, and he's used to teaching all across the United States. Um, there are Andrew if you want, when you're ready. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll recommend some more books after you're done. Okay. Okay. So Andrew's question for for you, Tuhan, is: Stand your ground and castle doctrine are often held in high esteem by self defense enthusiasts. But there are, are there any negative aspects and incidents around the legislation that we should be aware of? Oh, in all 50 states and how many thousands of municipalities within those states? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's complex. The, my general rule of thumb that I tell people is do the least amount of force possible yeah. to get you out of the situation to escape the situation. You're not trying to win the fight. You're trying yeah. to escape yeah, home. the danger. You're yeah. trying to get home. Yeah. With your body, Amen. with your conscience, with your finances, with your freedom intact. Yeah. You know, if you do the that's minimal true. you need to do, you know, that's going to help you a lot. Yeah. Castle doctrine notwithstanding, because mm. you, know, uh, you can do everything right, but, you know, in today's political climate, if you're a different race than the person they're going to automatically mm. assume a problem you know in certain municipalities so, yeah you know do everything you possibly can to cover yourself you yeah. know um, that's very true i mean where i live i'm more likely to get uh you know uh, uh followed by a coyote than i am uh by somebody. By somebody. <laughs> you know i mean i go outside the house is rare i don't see deer and and hear coyotes on you know, every couple of weeks out of, beyond the backyard fence. Mm. Uh, but if I was in the city, you know what? I would Now that I'm retired, I'd carry some drop money too, even in the United States where I have a badge and a gun. Mm. You know, uh, at the very least, you know, think about it this way from a ta tactical standpoint. Someone has a drop on you, either they're within knife range with a knife or they're standing six feet away with a firearm. Are you going to be able to go and draw fire from on them and put one or two rounds into them and there's very few places you can hit them that'll stop them with one shot yeah where they can fire on you That's or true. if they're close before they can stab you 
So it may yeah. be good just to, to take the drop money in your pocket, drop it, and step take a couple of steps back, draw your fire, identify yourself, you know, and try to effect an arrest or hold them for the police there. So, you know, it's it's what you can do under the law and what are good tactics mm. is another way to think about it. When I when I tell mm. people not only is doing the minimal amount minimal amount possible good legally good morally but it's good tactically if you got multiple opponents and yeah. you sit there yeah. and beat this one guy to a pulp meanwhile his partner is there stabbing you multiple times in the back and let me tell you i've spoken to people the first couple of times you get stabbed you don't know it's a stab you think it's a punch, punch yes yeah and i've been yeah. poked a couple yeah. of times in training and the only one that really hurt was the one that hit the rib there's a bone i got uh, sliced open yeah. over here I got stabbed over there. Uh, I got stabbed over here. The only one that hurt was the one that hit the bone. You know? Um, yeah. So, you know, think, read that article on the law, guys. It's, it's, a, it's that I wrote. It's, yeah. it's all my experience in the courts and my experience in martial yeah. arts. There's a, there's a lot of reason I say do the minimal you need to escape. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually about, as well, handling uh, or responding to the to the threat. If the threat is no longer there, there's no reason for you to do any yeah, more damage to the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is basically that could be deemed as an excessive course. Yes. Yeah. So if the threat is no longer there, assess everything. If you if mm -hmm. if it is safer for you to basically to 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 run, get out, to remove yourself from that place, do it. There's mm -hmm. no reason. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just like what Two Hundred Bill said. I mean. You should be able to adjust to the to your response according to the level of violence that is involved. So it's different between uh, you've got a confrontation rather than you're being mugged, mm. or being mugged like uh, rather you're just being like somebody's just poking knife at you, or basically somebody's already stabbing you. So you should be able to to adjust yourself to those level of violence that yes, is involved is. during the situation. But the moment you have already um, managed or handled the threat. If the threat right. is no longer there, remove yourself away no, as much home. as possible. I got a yeah. question for you, Guru Tom. Actually, I got two, but this one, Tom, is, we haven't got to the other part yet. So this one here is, um, uh, we just got to wait for this. Darn um, does the presence of loved ones make a difference in the amount and escalation? Uh, you got your kid with you, man. Absolutely. This is from Mike. Actually, Mike is my student. Yeah. Mike. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's it's still going to whether whether you're going to be defending yourself or your loved one. Okay. It, it basically uh, it changes the way you respond to the threat. That's why sometimes people will say, "Yep, yeah, if if you are in this situation, just run." It's it's good. It's a good thing if you can run. Especially if you're still fast and you're still able to run, it's fine. But if you got somebody, if you got a loved one that that will be compromised, you can't mm. run, and you you're basically forced to yeah, face the ethical, threat. Ethical, ethical obligation. Exactly. You can't just lead exactly. to the wolves. Yeah. Exactly. We have so, had files in New York on the New York City subway start to fondle a child with the mother sitting right next to them. You know, the mother can't run. You know. Uh, and these are big men, you know, or at least Literally. stronger than the female. So those are uh, people that should immediately be removed from any <laughs> living, any living oh, form. Yeah, they just yeah. it's it's a severe, you know, it's 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 on the level with a serial killer. They, yeah. they yeah. stop their brain. Castration from comes to mind. Okay. Yeah, the yeah yeah you just got to put them away. The we've had a a pedophile get out on probation, uh, and it, during lunch hour. Uh, go across the street to the bank and start offering kids. The moms are on the bank line. The kids are on the side. He goes over to them and starts offering them, buy them ice cream. Would you like to come with me and buy ice cream? So the, the yeah. bank teller came over and knows the, our court clerk who was the, the handling the case told the judge, judge sent uh, deputies over there to grab the guy, brought him back in. <laughs> Guess what? You know that, you you're on six months probation. Are you going away for two years? Now you're going away for two years. Uh, I didn't mean anything. 
Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got in the habit the last few years when I was working to speak to forensic psychologists when they're testifying. Mm. And all these guys, these pedophiles and um, various sexual deviants all have a uh, something in common with serial killers who go after a certain type of person. They were all abused in childhood and it, it affected their brain. Yeah. That's why you yeah. see you, you, you see these things that scratch your head. Most male pedophiles uh, look like they can't get a regular adult female to like them. But you see these female pedophiles as school teachers who are young, attractive women, mm -hmm. and they're hitting on 14, 15 year old boys mm -hmm. when they could go to the local college and go to a frat party with 18 year olds, it'd be legal, and they'd be. Is that something? As they want. It's not if about. You know what I mean? Isn't it's that not about. Think about they're, that. What happens was when you, when you speak to forensic psychologists, what they're saying is uh, these people are targeting very often uh, children who were at the age they were when they, they were. were yeah. 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 And, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what I'm Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. They were at the age. Pedophiles very commonly attack children who were at the age they were attacked. Oh, okay. Okay. To a certain extent, they're either mad at themselves or not defending themselves. Defending, yeah. Sometimes they're identifying with the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the case a lot where they're when you see a, um, a pedophile who is who is going after their own gender child, is they're identifying with the with the mm. perpetrator. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, okay. It's it's a it's a, a rite of passage in certain alternate communities these days to uh, um, talk about how their first sexual experience was when they were below the age of consent. So they actually mm. the pedophiles stalk them and groom them. And, yeah, and yeah. usually they're the vulnerable people with a not a good uh, family life. Mm. Um, and it affects their brain. Uh, emotional uh, abuse of a child yeah. when yeah. the brain is developing affects the physical structure of the brain. So that's why you have all these crazy people, the sexual deviants. Mm -hmm. And I won't get into it now. I don't want to get on PC on this. Yeah, 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 right. Sexual deviancy is, is not Darwinianly efficient. It's a, it's a, it's a broken brain. It's not mm. just a variant. It's, yeah. it's, it's a sign of child abuse in their youth. It's beyond repair. It is. It is well, most of them, it's beyond repair. Mm -hmm. Unless a miracle happens, I mean, it's really beyond repair. Uh, and yet I put them away their whole life. You cannot let them. No, you can't let you can't, they can't yeah. trust them. Yeah. That's, why yeah. it's, that's why you see, if you read uh, John Douglas, he was the FBI agent who started the profiling unit, the behavioral, behavioral science unit. Uh, at the FBI where they would hunt serial killers. And it was very specific where you see serial killers going after women who looked a certain way. Mm -hmm. They're going after the caregiver who sexually abused them when they were young. Yeah. And uh, now it's an, it, can, it, can, and it can express a couple of different ways. It can be this serial killer going after the women who look like that one. Or it can be pedophiles who go after kids who were at the age when that uh, pedophile was sexually abused. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of problems there that the, the politicians these days, I got to scratch my head with what these, what's wrong with these what people. What they're doing and coming up with. We were talking to the, uh, yesterday about the uh, Rotterdam grooming case with the grooming gang. Yeah. Taking young girls and turning them into drug addicts and prostitutes. Oh. And the local police looked the other way because they didn't want to, Worry about you know being politically to worry about being politically correct. Yeah. How yeah. Do you sleep at night? How do you, go home to sleep, at night? How do you sleep at I night knowing that? That it's like it's like uh, it's my it's my and, it's but it's not my kid. I don't care. You know that's and, and crazy though, man. I don't know how you sleep at night. You go home. How do you turn that off? How do you sleep at night? Yeah, I can't understand it. You know what I mean? But you just uh, turn it. You just tune it out. Maybe, it. maybe you didn't see it. I, I don't yeah, yeah. I wonder how many of them are are got problems themselves we had you know we had cases of um 
you know, pedophiles coming in with with uh, child pornography. And, hmm. you know, a couple of cases really made me wonder, you yeah. know, where the judges uh, gave the guy a, a minimum slap on the wrist. And I'm like, you know, what's going on here? You know, mm. uh, I mean, I've seen some horrendous stuff. We had a, a professor, college professor at the um, college up the road from me, Maris College, won teacher of the year, year before he was in his 60s. And his uh, his interns found child porn on his computer, 10,000 pieces. Whoa. The idea is I worked the case, uh, you know, as a court officer sitting there and guarding the case while they, the trial is proceeding. The most horrendous, demonic, I mean, tying six-year-olds down to logs so dogs can rape them. And they would put socks on a dog's paws so they would not scratch the, the skin of the kids. And I said, where do they get these kids? He said that they, uh, a lot of it is uh, Romania, other countries in Eastern Europe where they, there's some subculture mm. there will rent the kids out as beggars and they don't, you know, and they don't know where they go. And so, right, tell you, man, there's uh, special places. Place place place. place. So, anyway, we're getting off the subject of knives, guys. No, yeah, yeah, but yes, there are weird bad people in this world and you have to defend yourself from them. And so if here's, here's the exactly. I'll give you, if you have a right to defend yourself, which one for both? But okay. the politicians are denying you the tools you need to well, defend yourself. They are, in effect, denying you the right to defense. So part of the problem is we got a lot of bad politicians writing bad laws, but mm. you are living sure. in that world, people. Sure. So you, I want to tell my students, you have to basically play by American spies in Moscow. They call Moscow rules. You have to play as if you, if you're in a place with bad laws. We have to play where, as if you were in enemy territory, play by their mm. rules, factor that into your daily routine. Mm. Uh, I think it was Clive was asking about, Clive Turner from the UK was asking about, uh, did you watch when you roam the, the tourist tango where they, or the Macarena where they tell the bad guys, they check their pockets for their wallet and their passports, where everything is. What I used to do, in addition to some drop money in my left pants pocket, is have... I have a shirt with two pockets on it up here, and I would have my wallet with one of my credit cards and a photocopy of my passport and that, and my main money, and then we have the bills I would likely need throughout the day in another pocket. So if someone sees me paying for lunch, you know, whatever, mm. buying a, a ticket to somewhere, I'd take my yeah. money in that pocket, pay, you know, boom. If I got uh, change, the change would go in the pocket with the drop money. Because mm. you know, I could grab the drop money and the change here. You know, here's some yeah. euros. I like the British pounds. The British pounds are very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, we're um, well, this is all euros. We to, uh, you're really, really here. here. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, play by the rules. If you're in enemy territory, guys. Yes. Play yeah, by exactly. the rules. Yeah, and no, that's no. also one of the reasons why you have to make sure that you read like the loss of the place where you're going. It's very yeah. important. So you'll end up in, uh, exactly. in the exactly. jail there for uh, the gulag yes. for a year. Hang on. Okay, yeah. we're on part two, ethics of teaching knife. And then I'm going to get to Andrew's question because now that'll be relevant to here. Okay, so ethics of teaching knife. Your okay, so your guys' land. So uh, Guru Tom, your land's and overall responsibility when you are teaching edge weapons. Okay, um, that is that is a very um, I would say delicate uh, subject, especially when you teach edge weapon. I mean, mm -hmm. I pretty much it's better to teach somebody how to defend against an edge weapon, but to teach somebody to use also an edge weapon against uh, an attacker. I know this is something that um, would would quite fit in if the escalation if the situation basically warrants it but the but the the problem is actually this the not everybody okay because of the way they were brought up will be comfortable in using it unless basically they are already in that situation where they have to choose between mm -hmm. i would die or i need to survive okay i, I brought that up 
Very good point it, that they would not be comfortable maybe using no. that. When I entered those three no. women, they said the same, and I'm thinking like, your life's on the line. This guy is going to do whatever terrible things mm. to you. And yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, it's one of the reasons, again, this is where um, pressure testing comes in. Because sometimes at the beginning, for example, at the beginning of the course, they might not be comfortable to use not even any, any, any kind of weapon because they would think, no, I, I, I won't be able to deploy that. I won't be able to use that. I don't have the strength to, 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 to use that. But during the pressure testing, um, they sometimes discover that, yeah, uh, at some point I need, to, I need to learn how to use something. And the moment I use they, they, they would realize it. But uh, it could be more of a blunt weapon. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be, they'll be choosy. So it's like, I can deal, I, I, yeah, with blunt weapons, I can deal with it. But with knives, I won't be able to. Okay, it's it's a different thing because it we know it. I mean, the moment you use a knife, it's kind of like personal. Ugly. It's ugly. It's ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah. ugly. Exactly. Yeah. And like some people, it's because they don't want the feel of like stabbing somebody or cutting somebody. Some no, because of blood. Yeah. But yeah, it's it it's 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 a thing. That's why, um, like for example, uh, I I already had like a few people who who who. who contacted me they wanted to learn filipino martial arts but they started talking about i would like to learn the knife system well because... this is andrew's question so actually you're going to answer his question all right so go ahead <laughs> yeah okay so basically uh they would say it's very effective mm -hmm. self-defense and then they're gonna get, get go start tom so, we're losing first... you're losing the signal Mm. Can, you repeat, oh. can you repeat that last sentence? I, I think we lost your signal. You're back now, but there was a part there where it got scrambled. Repeat that last sentence. All right. Mm. Uh, we, we, we lost you again. Your image are, is frozen. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, he might have to come back in. He... Let, me, let me give you an example from my own life. Uh, my wife and I just got our house. We were newly married. We got uh, uh, We were painting a room. And ran out of that color paint. I said, oh, wait, I'm going to go to Home Depot or local hardware store for more paint. She said, no, no. You go, we got this other color for another room. You go do, start that room. I'll go to Home Depot and come back. And, uh, you know, we'll continue. You just keep working. I said, okay. So this is on a Saturday afternoon in August. She goes to the Home Depot parking lot. Comes back 20 minutes later. No paint. Crying hysterically. What happened? What happened? Two guys, she goes to, gets out of her car, mm. goes to go in the, the, the park, you know, through the parking lot. Two guys get out of the pickup truck. Hey, baby, you want to come with us? We're going to a party. No, guys, leave me alone. I want to go to, and she's not dressed sexy. She's like sweatpants, t shirt, yeah, and yeah, right, yeah, ponytails. Right, right. She's got little, probably little spots of paint on her. Come on, baby, come with us. No, guys, leave me alone. I, I'm married. I want to go with you. Oh, you're not married. She doesn't have her rings on. We're painting the house. Come on, come with us. No, leave me alone. They're going to move towards it. No, you're coming with us. They got to reach to grab her. She mm. takes her pocket knife. It's actually this little spider co right here. Uh, there, there. This little spider. There we go. Uh, okay, yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, the anyway, enduro. The enduro. Which blade? Yeah, the old enduro. Actually, this is the old model they call the clip it. It's got the plastic pocket clip. Oh, that's old. Old, old school. Yeah, it was back in the 90s. Yeah. She said their eyes got, she said, I forget what she said. It's either a simple get back or, or I'll, I'll gut you right here, something like that. She said something to them. And their eyes got big. They took in the car. They they ran to the car so fast, it was almost like smoke under their feet, like a cartoon, she said. And okay. they go off peeling smoke tires out of the parking lot. During the altercation, she was did what she needed to do. She was really forceful. She did everything right. As soon as, as she put the pocket knife away when they left, and then once the danger was gone, she collapsed emotionally. Barely got uh, home. Because all the all the build, emotional build and out there. Really dumped, just, so she got home and she was crying hysterically. She was very upset. But during the emer emergency, she handled herself really, really well. So I was telling, uh, Tom, I was telling Dean how my wife defended herself 
by simply displaying a knife to some bad guys who are trying to kidnap and probably rape and kill her. Um, so, and I live in a, we live now, I grew up in Queens, New York. She grew up in the Bronx, New York. Now we're in an area about an hour and a half north of that. There's more deer than people in our area. You would mm. not expect that to happen, you know, in our area. So it could happen anywhere. Yeah. I, I talk to people a lot about, um, about camouflage and awareness. Leo used to have us go and, and we went home from class. Okay, guys, when you go home, walk and look around, look for ambush points where, you know, bad guys are you. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah, that's true. of the take mm -hmm. two or three different routes and, you know, think about, all right, if this one is blocked because of a fire, and you know, can you mm -hmm. go around and look over there? Um, you know, if, if bad guys are coming down the street, especially young guys get stubborn, you know, if guys looking, other teenagers coming down, they might not be bad guys. It's just got three or four teenagers coming down the street on your side. You may want to cross mm -hmm. the street if, if you don't know them or if you're in their neighborhood, you know. Um, you know, just you, you need some, get some camouflage there to look like you either belong in the neighborhood or you're a tougher target. I used to have friends in Bedford Stuyvesant, which was a really tough part of New York back mm. in the evening. And Glorious. yeah. So uh one of the they're both black guys, one of them was a cop. And there was uh I used to we used to go and train together. And I asked him, because it was a newspaper article that came out, that if if you were a white person, you had like a hundred percent chance of getting mugged in that neighborhood. And I asked him, I said, you know. No one ever bothers me. What is this? What's going on with this crazy headline? And he said, well, you know why you don't get mugged, Bill? I said, why? He said, it's because you walk like a cop. You look like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I walk yeah. like a cop. I got flat feet. He says, no. <laughs> he says, first off, you dress like you might have a concealed weapon on you. You always have a vest. Yeah. The multi-pocket vests were popular then, or I'd have a, a denim jacket or something. When you walk down the street, you, you walk like you know where you're going. Someone looks at you, you look them right in the eye, and you don't look way afraid. You look them right in the eye, and you keep eye contact until you pass them. Mm, um, yeah. And you just look like you look like you're an undercover cop walking around. I wasn't yeah. back when I was a, a kid. I was like 20 years old when I was going over there. Um, but it was, uh, it was like the type of camouflage. There are some flies. Uh, that have the same coloring as bees and wasps, that yellow black stripe. Mm -hmm. They have no stinger whatsoever. But because they're the same coloring as an animal with a stinger, the, the you know the insects leave them alone. Yeah. Predatory insects. Uh, and there are a lot of cases like this. There are fish that um, have the same coloration as as very venomous uh, sea snakes. Mm -hmm. you know, as as we can go on through this. Yeah. So that that translates to human terms by uh, that um, stockbroker, a student of mine who came down the stairs, shined his flashlight into the mail uh, room area. Bad guy comes out, sees him, and says, can I help you, sir? And, uh, no, officer, I'm just leaving. Boom, the guy takes off, right? The guy's not a cop. But he had a tactical flashlight shining in his eyes. <laughs> I said, you know, authoritative voice, can I help you, sir? You know, same as the female officer. She's actually an officer, but she never displayed the gun. Mm. Put her hand in a fanny pack, took a, a half step forward like she's getting to a shooting stance. Can I help you, sir? Right? Yeah, right. Just presenting that kind of right, my, authority taking charge. My out of her pocket where the two guys tried to rap, rob yeah. it or uh, rape him. Uh, yeah. Her. I'll gut you right here. They did not. Yeah, right. Right. Black women are cowards. They do not. Yeah. That's why most attacks on women start with a either grab in the hair or a grab in the wrist because they want to stop the hands. They're worried about the claws going into the eyes, the, the thumb yes. going into the eyes because that's the real weapon they're worried about. They're not worried about a punch. Yeah. They're yeah. worried about one in the eye or women grabbing a wrist. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, grabbing a weapon. Yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> a lot of it is 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 you have to teach awareness from the get-go. You have to go through the physical emotions of the awareness. 
you know that is really important yes around the neighborhood of the yeah. school you know mm. or tell, on your way home notice ambush points make sure you yes. get locked in your car most people lock yeah. now, but mm. not all the time um you know, areas of escape routes of escapes and everything yeah. you have you have you have to know that one more thing about women um when you train women women no i'm sorry to tell you these mod, young modern people the male and female human being the brains are different they are different from the womb when they start to divide up between male and female in the womb the brain structures become mm. different so anyway what's worked mm. with me is you tell if you have women who are reluctant to uh, defend themselves. Get them in the mindset of defending the people they love. Those yes, who you exactly. love behind you, if not physically, <clears throat> metaphysically. If the guy, bad guy kills you, he's taking you away from the people who love you. Uh, so yeah. you are defending the people you love when you, you love, defend yes. yourself. By, the, by defending yeah. yourself. You know, women yeah. have a very, uh, usually a very strong maternal instinct. Um, they're, they're very nurturing. They're not aggressive men. You know, the hunter-gatherer societies that human beings were born in for means most of our human history. It was the women who were the gatherers, gathering plant food. The men are out hunting. Men are built for using tools for hunting, for, for, hunting, yeah. for dispatching animals easily. Uh, they have a makeup for that physically and mentally. So you have to That's teach it. men and women differently. Yeah, uh, you have to build That's everything it. into the fight technique, the practice of the fight from start to finish. Awareness, yeah. proximity, ambush, mm. escape, yep. are yep. all built into the technique. Yep. The action of the step of the fight, all the steps of the fight. Uh, awareness of other bad guys. Awareness of uh, the escape route, and then. When you're practicing the technique, practice the technique and es practice escaping to Escape. the yeah. end of the tool. Even That's if true. two or three steps. Yep. You build That's it into true. the system. We had a cop when I first got on the job, NYPD, found with his, back then they were still using revolvers, his car keys stuffed inside his empty cylinder. What happened? He went to the range. You know, they had speed loaders on the duty rig. How does the guy practice? Takes the 50 rounds, the, the box of ammo, dumps it in his pocket, shoots his six, dumps, reloads from his pocket. Now he's on duty. He's got speed loaders. Does he practice with them? No. He's got a firefight behind a car. Bang, 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 bang. Goes to keep it out of the bad guy, you know, staying behind cover, try to reload. Why is this damn thing? He's trying to stuff it in <laughs> the car. He's into the cylinder harder and harder. Bad guy comes around his concealment and, and shoots the good guy. So you have to build the technique from start to finish, all yeah. phases of the technique into the body so you practice yes. it. So it's able to come out under stress. Yeah. You you have to look at the technique, defense technique as a whole unit from the start to the end of the fight. So the, yeah, including exactly. first yeah, aid, including yeah. escape, including what you're gonna say yeah. to the store owner. You went into a store to yeah. Yeah. One, one, get me help. Am I bleeding? And yeah. To what not to say to the cops when you get there, I, I, I'm, you know, I respect you. I don't, I don't want to give you a hard time, but uh, I want to speak to a lawyer before I. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Before you. Or, I'm, I'm really not feeling well. I got to get to the, to the hospital. Yeah. And walk, and that's what NYPD is. Uh, the union is recommending to the officers, get to the hospital first, cool down. We'll send you a lawyer, mm. and then you talk to your lawyer first before you talk to. Uh, supervisor, mm. so you got to do the whole thing, guys. You got to, yeah. do these days, you have to do the whole thing. No, yeah, I better be more prepared it's, than not. Yeah, just, uh, you have to teach the so, whole thing. Um, yeah, Guru Tom. Um, I, yes, I, I'm glad you were able to make it back in. I, I know you, you, you got like cut off there. Um, you're a good looking, Tom. You, you were, uh, you were kind of at the same time answering. To, well, you were kind of answering Andrew's question, and at the same time, you were going into uh, overall responsibility teaching somebody knife. So maybe finish there and quickly your vetting process. Okay. So, yeah, you, uh, you just don't take anybody off the street. 
yeah yeah so i mean um teach uh, basically when 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 you teach like um somebody to use a weapon not just not just a knife uh any weapon um it is actually better to work with the person because different different people different uh, people have different tolerance when it comes to what kind of weapon they'll be using for self defense um but it's one of the one of my one of the things that i i don't like with some of the instructors is just basically handling or telling somebody you you, you do you feel unsafe in in the street get a knife yeah i, I it, in in one of the this is in one of the fb page so uh, they were talking about um uh preparedness for situations so like for example for being for for being attacked in the street so this girl okay uh said i w- i happened to watch a movie about somebody being kidnapped and i don't feel safe somebody mm. said get a knife i was like why i was like I I immediately I immediately asked why did you why did you advise that because at least that will make her feel safe it's like yeah but if she doesn't know how to use it does she yeah so have it but doesn't mean she's going to exactly. exercise exactly so i mean in 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 some cases okay people who even like carry weapons whatever whatever they are but because they don't know how to use it they actually ended up losing it and sometimes yeah. the attacker is actually using it against them yeah they're taking it yeah, that's the worst i think it's more like exactly. they give themselves self a false sense of confidence exactly you know, hey, i got this thing but you know so it's 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 not really uh, it's 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 uh it's very irresponsible okay and yes i was i was say, as i was saying earlier um anybody who basically ask me to let's say that this is not self defense but more of like fma so they want to teach they they want me to teach them a uh, knife work my first uh the first thing that i tell them is this get a police clearance show me the police clearance and then i'm going to you. think about it so they have they 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 have they have they, they i i get that vetting system now most of the time well actually all of the time they don't actually come back anymore so after that well, good for so, you for like standing by that you know yeah, what i mean yeah i'm like no nope, yeah. i'm sorry so especially like sometimes they would come to the class and yeah i would i would love to learn fma but i really would love to learn more the 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 the, the knife work uh that already basically the alarm um, the alarm comes up yeah no nope, i'm <laughs> sorry i said with this is basically how we uh, this is how i run the class and so what do you do in the class then well well we do empty hand we do the sticks um then from time to time yeah we do the, we 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 learn how to defend against a knife attack so um but uh teaching like for example how to use it like yeah i mean with my with my guys that i have been with for a long time now mm. okay but i mean somebody basically coming to me it's like ah sorry sorry <laughs> it's it's not it's not that easy it's no, not that easy no, I mean, so um, yeah i have I, i have to be really careful because no, good for you for i think that's great you're doing that i'm just yeah. wondering just hey scott i'm, I'm sorry um i'm going to tell i'm going to ask tom bill or go tom if they can answer this uh, for you it's just be, it's just that we we kind of passed that and all that but hopefully um scott uh bear hopefully that they will answer your question for you uh post interview Um it's just that we got a couple here and all that and um and we're kind of already running out of time and Andrew I, 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 what were the key aspects you look for in terms of deciding upon escalation That's uh aspects yes yes correct correct Okay let's you can I'll give it real quick real quick Okay okay good the okay, difference right. between civilian self defense and law enforcement self defense In in law enforcement, you do have a, a a ladder of escalation, but you don't have to match it. So you know you start off with just a verbal warning, and mm. then 
if he gets physical with you, empty hand, you don't have to stay empty hand. You can go to pepper spray. You can jump a, a rung on the ladder. You can go to yep. baton. You can do something like that. You can basically rough rule of thumb with law enforcement is you're allowed to go one lung above him on the record on the ladder of uh, physical force, right? The only time you, you have to meet him is when you have deadly physical force, right? Uh, but with civilians, it's not. You really have to stay on that same level. Same level. In most jurisdictions. Some not everywhere, but most jurisdictions. So if the guy's attacking you empty hand, unless there's a big disparity of force, for instance, a man attacking a woman or a young person at attacking someone, senior citizen and whatnot, uh, usually the law wants you to stay at the same level of force. So you can... Uh, defend an empty hand attack with empty hand technique. Mm. Um, you know, if the guy's a deadly weapon, like a knife or a gun, then you can pull your knife or gun. Uh, and then there's also the psychological aspects of it. Most places in the world do not like the juries and the judges, let's say, do not like guys carrying knives. Yeah. I uh, had a case in uh, New York City where a correction officer was in a bar. Uh, guy pulled a knife on him threatened him instead of pulling out his gun. Uh, he had a, a little snub nose 38. He pulled a knife and he said, that's, that's it. You were the knife. I'm tired of this. You want to come out of here? And the guy came out and he stabbed the heart. The DA told me, ADA told me if he, he was perfectly legit, he could have pulled out his gun and shot him. But because he pulled out the knife, he was looking for trouble when he found mm. it, he got it. And, and now it's on him. We would not be here if he had pulled out his gun and shot the bad guy. Yeah. So, you know, on and on paper, a, a knife is a deadly weapon just like a, a firearm is, and you could use it for defense mm. under the same rules that you can a firearm. But mm. psychologically dealing with real-world people, especially lawyers and uh, judges and the people who wind up in, on juries, yeah. you're, you're, you're fighting uphill if you have to defend yourself with a knife. So yeah. do everything in your favor – Carry if you have to carry a knife, carry a knife that you actually use for, for work or sport, or you know, yeah, like that. And yeah, you know, and then learn how to defend yourself if you need to. God, yeah, with that knife, yeah. Uh, in terms um, of security of schools, uh, you know, there, there's the it's a practical reason why I teach empty hand versus knife first. Because you're not likely to have a knife in your hand if you're attacked by a guy with a knife. You're mm -hmm. likely to be empty handed. So you need to, I mean, the cops obviously, if somebody catches you with a knife, you're allowed to shoot them. Mm. You teach empty hand defense first because they're likely to be within range. They're not going to attack you cool 100 yards away. Hey, I'm going to stab you with a knife. Here I come. Oh! <laughs> you know, yeah. Average, yeah. average yeah. fight in the States, average shooting is seven yards. Average gunfight in New York City is six feet. So, you know, from six feet away, guy pulls a knife and charges at you. Are you going to have time to get your gun out? No. You have to deal with an empty hand. You got to deal with the threat first, yeah. man. Yeah, so yeah exactly. In, yeah. in both their empty hand classes, law enforcement classes, everything. The, the, you're, if you have a weapon on you, you need empty hand versus knife first to buy yourself time. Yeah. And, Knife and be yes. yes. to buy yourself time to make it a not empty hand versus knife for fight mm -hmm. to make versus weapon. Yeah. Fight. But yeah. we're assuming you don't have a weapon in your hand most of the time, so you need to do empty hand versus knife first. Yeah, yeah, I like I that. Mean, to, to add to, to add to what Tuhan Bill said, um, when 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 basically you're looking at the threat, you're basically looking at the person's intent. So mm -hmm. did he say, "I want to kill you"? Or is it going to be a matter of like he's really coming close to you now, or you've got like his friends flanking you? Mm. If does he has the means to do it? Okay, so if he says that I'm gonna kill you, but it's basically like uh, sitting somewhere or basically just shouting at you from 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 far, the then exactly the the, the level yeah. of threat is not is not there, and of course the opportunity. If basically he is the per if the per if the person is uh, shouting I want to kill you but is basically standing behind the door or outside of your house, 
so the threat is not there so now uh in 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 the uk basically when it comes to the use of force they we use the word proportional use of force now when it comes to the pro proportional use of force you're basically looking at what the 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 the, the physical difference of you and your attacker so mm -hmm. if your attacker is basically bigger than you meaner than you or gender difference or mm -hmm. uh yeah or if they are more than one or basically mm -hmm. you are in a position where in uh you are already like lying down on the ground or you're being pinned on the wall and basically he's trying to push your head or punch you so just imagine if somebody's punching you and you're and you're basically pinned against the wall you're yeah. basically your your face is being okay attacked from the front and the back of your head is slamming against the wall so there are different situations as well that would basically uh give you that that um that 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 basically that 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 honest okay belief that your life was in danger that you were so that is basically proportionality as well okay. so you have to look at that okay so that's why when you when you but again the the idea is for you to handle the threat once the threat is no longer there try to remove yourself from this the from the from that place if you can Okay. No, no, so, no, no, no. I like that. Yes, yeah. that using the, you know the word proportion there, what have you. Um, we're coming. I mean, let me just see before we get to Colts, who on Bill's favorite. <laughs> um, Andrew, question for both. Um, what other considerations and skills would you consider essential for those concerned with the defensive applications of martial arts? <laughs> Essential that is, skills. That is Andrew's question. Okay. Oh, what, what do we start with? Is that what Andrew's asking? Yeah, basically we said was you've already touched upon the importance of understanding the law of public perception and pred uh, predatory mindset. What other considerations and skills would you consider essential for those concerned with the defensive applications of martial arts? The last part oh, being his what question. What have we not covered? Yeah, I guess like he's big, yeah, you can say that in other considerations. Uh, young guys, I'm 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 a senior now. What do we did have what what haven't we covered in your opinion yet? And you listeners, what have we not covered to answer that gentleman's question? We've not covered as far as being we've covered knife, we've covered uh firearms. I think maybe what he's asking is all right, I'll put it this way. If I had a, a short course that I get at this question a lot. If you only teach someone for an hour, and and a lot of times that's kind of the principle we have in some of our law enforcement. Uh, oh, Andrew's going comms medical. Yeah, comms. Uh, you know, you have uh, yeah. the emergency phone number for the police. Uh, yes, as your and your speed. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Speed dial. Uh, that's a good point. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I I carry a tourniquet with me, and we advise everyone who carries yep. a firearm to carry a tourniquet with them. Uh, hmm. know how to learn how to use it. Um, 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 oh, also, we, there are like, there are certain apps now that you can use for emergency okay. that you don't have to ring the like uh, emergency services. Good point. So you can basically use some apps now that you can you, you can just basically uh, tap it like a speed dial, but basically it uh, it, it uh, basically. Uh, sends sends the message to the correct uh, no, person. Yeah. Yeah. You don't correct, probably have yeah. the address because everything being they can just they'll they'll know where you're where you're wherever you're seeing oh, your payment. Yeah, like there are certain apps that um, that are being um, used by disabled people, like those who are deaf or those oh, who are. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like they have a handicap or something. Yeah, they okay. have a handicap, so they basically okay. you can use that because at least you can contact. You can oh, contact the services oh, without, without talking. Operator. Yes. It sends a signal yeah. direct to them. Like what exactly. some have they fall down, they press that button. It sends yeah. a signal. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen the infomercials oh, yeah. on that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and so, like certain oh, certain codes as well with the hands to talk to, I mean to tell oh, to communicate oh, with somebody yeah. that yeah, especially okay. for ladies. Tom, you just gave yeah. a homework assignment. So uh your homework assignment is to send Dean 
that app in the UK and I'll look up for right, that network in the US, send it to Dean, and then yeah, we'll go and, and check later on what apps do. That do that, Dean. Yeah. Okay. Everyone has a smartphone yeah. on it now, I think. Almost everyone, right? Almost everyone, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Tom, you will be sending me an app. Yeah, the app. <laughs> yeah. Tom, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Help so, me. Yeah, but yeah. Pick it up. I yeah. remember one there was one a anti uh uh aggression one for women where they would take it and put the click this one shot and the it would do a selfie video, you face to the bad guy. You're being recorded right now. This is going direct to the police. Oh yeah. You know, there, there are certain apps like going that as live well. to the police right now. Oh, mm -hmm. how, oh and that would that's fantastic. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, unless they're really psychos. Yeah. I was curious. Oh, so, yeah, but, um, I mean, um, w when it comes to self-defense, um, addressing awareness is, is really important to situational awareness, spatial awareness is really important. It's... Mm -hmm. um, it's actually it's your like vetting system in order not to in order not to put yourself in 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 that situation in that critical situation so it it, it actually uh, helps you to avoid um being in that in that particular from moment. the get go right so yeah exactly yeah. so like what um like what bill what Tuhan bill was uh, saying earlier on i mean before you go to a building or before you basically walk in dark alley assess it Okay. Yeah. Make sure that you you manage to you manage to get informations like um, the where is the next lighted area, where is the next convenience store, where is the CCT, mm. where is where are the CCTVs, where are basically the blind spots, your your exit points, where can you go if something happens, and uh, I remember I remember earlier on Tuhan Bill was saying about clothing. I do remember when. When I was back in 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 college, and um, of course I had that I had to deal with my parents. Um, I can go out, but as long as I graduate, so oh. <laughs> to be able to finish my college. So um, every time I, I every time basically I go out, I if I can get a an information about the place mm. as much as I can, I will do that. And then sometimes I even. I even actually carry extra clothes. So they're basically not black ones, but they are like dark gray ones or navy blue type of like uh, coats. Because yeah. the, the thing is, if you put them on and you basically hide in the shadow, it actually blends with the shadow well rather than uh, black. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because if you basically wear black and you hide in the shadows, no, you, 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 become like a, you become a silhouette. Yeah. So, so you would not recommend fluorescent orange? <laughs> well, if you want to be a moving target, yeah. But yeah, I mean, even like um, going to place, if you're, if you're going uh, like, if we're going to like Italy or France or those, that particular, like when we went to Nice, I, I, I had to uh, look around with like crime rates. What are the typical type of mugging mm. or, or, or assault that happens? So that basically I can, um, I can immediately prepare myself for it. So uh, if you can get those informations beforehand, that is good. Right. If not, basically what basically you see, assess, assess the, assess the, assess the place. If I go into a building, I always, I always look at where's the nearest fire exit, where are basically where are the stairs, where are those things. So I, I get those informations, which is going to be valuable for me because face it. No matter how you think you can, you can fight or you can mm -hmm. defend, de defend yourself, there are certain situations that you would rather to avoid it. Sure, okay? yeah, you're right. If, if, you can, sure. if you can, yeah, exactly. Because sometimes um, it, it, it's not worth it, okay? As, uh, if you can avoid it, you, 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 you better do. Because as... as a, as we teach it, basically, self-defense is like a mission. And your mission is to be able to handle the threat 
to manage the threat and go back home safe to your loved ones. Mm. Okay, so there's no point in basically doing something that will land you in jail. Yeah, right. Because because that's, that's right because you did you weren't prepared or you didn't do your due diligence or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last, oh. but I have two short things that might help answer the questions. Who's what this? Physical uh, essentials that Andrew Jansen was asking about. Okay. Okay. Go to okay. my blog page and look at the advanced hand versus knife. And look at what I teach police officers, because I have a very short time period to teach police. Mm. And so what things of the bigger Kutatarsha empty hand versus knife training do I whittle down and compress and just give them that section and how I structure that? Uh, and there's a general principle of Kutatarsha that if you treat an empty hand attack like it's, it might have a concealed weapon, you're covered if he does have a concealed weapon. Uh, the other thing is, we used to play a game when my son was young. We'd go into a uh, restaurant or whatever, and I'd ask him and my wife, okay, guys, we sit at the table, close your eyes, tell me what escape routes and places of cover and concealment did you see mm. on the way in? Mm. Oh, yeah. okay. They'd say this yeah. that, and that. I said, remember, the the door to the kitchen, there's a back door out of the kitchen. Uh, yeah. on the first floor, if you really had to, you could break a window, get out of the window. Um what places here will stop a bullet, which won't? What uh, improvised weapons are around you at hand? You know, things like that. Good idea. Oh, turn into yeah. a game. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah it's and, one of the things that we did as well when I was in the reserve. Yeah. So no, every, 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 every place we go to, assess the, sit, assess the area. There is and a, basically possible, possible uh, entry points of, yeah, of, of yeah. basically of an attack or something. Yeah. Long to officers Long to at a restaurant several years ago. The four of them are sitting at a table, a uh, booth, right? So the four are sitting in the booth. Bad guy comes up, shoots the far two facing him, and then had time to shoot both of these guys before they could react. So shot Ooh. one facing him, come up, bang, this guy's dead. Then the and then shot the probably the close one, if I remember correctly. So shot the guy who could see him, shot the guy who's back to him. That locked in the two inner ones, shot those two guys. Uh, so ever after that, the police officers, when they were smart, did not sit in a booth at a restaurant. Yeah, again, with tables with chairs see, that are could want. handle simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, when we would go out with uh, other law enforcement, there was always a little fight of who would sit with their back to the wall and who would face out and look what's going on. You know, um, so, you know, things to keep in mind, guys, just I, I, I know I, I point at my blog post a lot to get dot com. Look for the blog page because a lot of these questions I've had before. And I've made articles out of them. Read through them. I, I yeah, hardly right. you mentioned it for a reason. Yeah. Exactly. It's a good one. Go Joanne Bill, you guys got right. You wrote an article on it. You guys, I'm telling you, man, there's a lot of good stuff there. A lot of good and, and all that. See this gray hair. Bill. This is real gray hair. It's not fake gray hair. I didn't die at the Not fake. These are, these are real earned, gray hair. Earned, earned gray hairs, huh? Well earned. earned. Well earned, yes. But two on Bill, why do you love Colts so much? <laughs> knife <laughs> Colts. <laughs> so, knife it's a bonus Colts. question. I, I, I couldn't hear what it was. <laughs> Why do I love Watch Watch? Knife Colts. Oh, Colts. Knife Colts, your favorite. What's, what's the issue with Knife, knife Colts? So today, well, people that extent, are in these Knife uh, Colts. Yeah, you know, I've seen people get hurt from that attitude. Yeah. Uh, that's true. My teacher had a student, uh, a bunch of young guys who... Uh, went off and did their own thing back in the late 70s, early 80s, and were teaching. And then back in the 90s, I think, one of them got in trouble, got into a bar. They were in a bar, and him, Philip, young Filipino guy, and uh, a, a younger, I think the other couple were Chinese. And the they were smoking where they shouldn't be in New York City, you know, restaurants in those days. Oh, I know this story. Uh, you know this story. You know who I'm talking about, too. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, early 2000s, that, yeah, let's not mention details. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> throw them out. So, I believe it was a female who jumped on the bouncer's back, 
the other guy grabbed his arm, and then the, the Filipino guy at FMA came in and gave an uppercut right in the femoral artery and killed the guy. And the big, heavy bounce empty hand, he would have, you know, been able to pick them all up and throw them out. Uh, but the guy, you know, really, you know, was a little drunk at the time, but um, he was training very aggressively. Their uh, class was kill, 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 die, you know. Wow. Mm. And, uh, you know, it was, it's not good psychologically to train people. Uh, no, it's and not. You, you're not being a responsible teacher. Training. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, um, when we were when we were training, when we were doing bay bayonet training back in the reserves, yeah, we we, we shouted that. But military it, training it, is military, right. that's military training. Right, right. You're not, like your nope. average classmate or your students. No. That cult mentality, you know what I mean? Where now you're giving the average layman who's entrusting you yeah, in exactly. your classroom and instilling them that this is way. I mean, this is, and, yeah, this is, this, this, this is the problem. Uh, a lot of instructors, as, as I've said before, still have this mindset coming from the 70s or, I mean, they teach some, something that is more like military stuff when it comes to knife against knife or using their knife for self-defense, which is actually not, not good for civilians. It's not, it, it's, it doesn't help. It doesn't actually bode well even especially for FME. Uh, mm. I'll be honest with that one. From about 2000 on, when I go to apply for insurance for, the, uh, for our summer camp, uh, I remember there was one particular one right after 2000 that would ask you, do you do this and this and this and this? And the ones that were not covered, they named a particular uh, style of FMA that was famous for specializing in knife. This, this family name, you know, X, Y, Z, Kali, we will not cover that art. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's you got to think. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay. You got to think. Um, you know, it, it, you don't want to, you know, I was. Yeah, that, that could follow you. I mean, that's. I was yeah. in school, my friends and my brothers, you know, you, you, you're you looking out for them. And then when you become a law enforcement officer and you're teaching um, you're teaching uh, recruits or doing in-service training with the guys. You know, you have you have to you, you as a law enforcement instructor, you're taught to teach the law, and then as a martial arts instructor, you're saying, okay, how can I work this where they will appreciate the fact that I'm giving them things to save their life physically and financially mm -hmm. and morally and. Everything yeah. else. And so you have to speak to them in their language. Um, so a lot of it is this is what this is why we're teaching you this is to keep you out of jail. You don't want to go to prison. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So you that mindset came over into my regular martial art classes, you know, more and more. And you know, because I when I was young, I was a hothead. I was, you know, um, you know, I was there leading the class. You know, at 20 years old, doing drills and saying "kill, <laughs> kill, kill." You know, that's see, that's the problem with with knife stuff. It's very can oh, be very, man, that's a dark uh, road. Man. The young males want to be tough. They want to be cool. Know that uh, think of themselves as the baddest guy on the planet. Yeah, and you know, if they're young and single, there's a, a bit of a of a a, a mental hierarchy struggle for who's the baddest because in a tribal community who has a big bad mm -hmm. mm -hmm. guy gets his pick of the yeah. pretty yeah. hierarchy yeah. 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 Uh, yeah so you gotta you gotta work against that as a martial art instructor and exactly. you have a blog post on this mm. on so um you know it's you have to you have to be very careful when you teach martial arts these days you know, the 70s, yeah. even the beginning of the 80s, you know, you, you, it's very hard to get sued. I mean, we got guys who mm. got prodded with knives and cut, and no mm. one ever thought of suing Leo. Just it wasn't mm. on the table. You know, now you get people who, you know, uh, who will get 
morally offended, visually offended by something and sue you or complain. Exactly. That's you true. Know, so, you That's know, you have, to, you have to be careful, guys. You got to think this through. Yeah. 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 And, and also, just 2021. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, and, and also, if, if, if your student get into trouble, you as an instructor will be called, could yeah. be called, called to court. Uh, I've got this um, example from one of my uh, FMA friends. So he had his new student um, about a couple of months uh, with him studying FMA. And he, he, he got into, he, he did a criminal act basically, uh, killed somebody with, with a knife. So, but it was, it was more of like a crime of passion. But of course, the police, uh, upon learning that, he wa that this particular guy was learning FMA, of mm -hmm. course, went to see him. And they started asking him about the training that he has been getting and all those sorts. But the, the, way, the way the guy killed the, uh, the, the way the guy committed the crime, it wasn't really anything about anything that he learned from FMA. But of course, you're, you're going to be going to talk to you about it, yeah. Yeah, they will. And like, for example, here in the UK, uh, um, if something happens if something happens to my student, I would be, okay, I, I, I would be inter interviewed by the police as well. I mean, even without, mm. even, if, even, even, even if that's not the case, I mean, Okay, if it is out of self-defense, but if they use that particular skill set or skills, I mean, to commit a crime and it's not really self-defense, I'm, uh, I don't know what, I don't know basically how, no, I'm going yeah. no. to carry part of the guilt. Yeah, Yeah. right. This just a mere fact of association, all of that. No, good stuff. Yeah. Okay, last, last question. I'll give you both a crack at it. Richard is asking... What is your feeling about brand just brandishing the knife? Just brandishing. You want to go? You want to take a crack at it first? <clears throat> I'll give you. I'll, I'll say it. So uh, I gave that example already of my uh, wife, who was accosted by two guys who tried to uh, kidnap her and, and probably rape and kill her. She brandished a knife. She was verbally aggressive, but did not move towards them. And they got back in their truck and they drove off. Yeah, yeah. The majority of uses, uh, defensive uses of a firearm in the United States are not firing the gun. They're brandishing the gun. Basically pulling it out, get back, get back, and the guy, bad guy runs mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when the guy tries to break in your door, I have a gun. You know, you rack the shotgun and the guy runs away. They don't break through the door. Mm -hmm. So... Most of the time that weapons are used, at least in the United States, defensively by a good guy, it is the brandishing of the weapon, not the actual use of the weapon. Yeah. So there are cases where you could do that. You have to do it in a smart way, though. If the bad guy goes and tries to break in the house and say, I got a gun, leave, and he runs away, you should be calling 911. You should not be opening mm -hmm. the door and chasing him down the street. Yes, exactly. People mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. running down the street. Yeah. You know, you know, you have some common sense, people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so most of the times when a defensive weapon is used, it's used in brandishing and getting the bad guy to run away and go mm. find the victim somewhere else rather than actually using the weapon physically on that bad guy. Tom, yeah. I'd like to add. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's actually true. I mean, Depending on the situation, home invasion, um, brandishing a weapon or a knife as a deterrent, yeah. okay, is is sometimes enough, okay. But the thing is, it, you have to, uh, you also have to show that if if pushed, you're willing to use it, yeah, okay. Because if you're brandishing it, and the, yeah, you you're, 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 you're basically your attackers see that you're basically you're not sure about it, yeah, then, you're next level. Exactly, they're gonna to go to the next level. But, but the thing is, it doesn't always have to be a knife. It could be other weapons as well. It could be a weapon of opportunity. But it's basically and and 
yeah, to get like what what uh, Tuhonville's wife did, if you hold it, and sometimes the way you command your voice, you shout at the person. It sometimes it's not it's not just basically the the knife, because they see that you your your intention is there, and if mm. push comes to show, I'm gonna use it. So that is sometimes enough. Okay. No, good but point. yeah, mm. I just just. Yeah, just but just like Tuhan Bill said, you have to be you have to be wise. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Yeah, like, uh, you pull out, you blade out, and the voice yeah. like that, they're gonna be like, uh, you know yeah. what? This oh, okay, I'll give you two. Right I'll give you two examples. You know how uh, smiling uh, releases endorphins, elevates your mood. Frowning releases cortisol that depress your mood. <laughs> That's also true of uh, body posture. Yeah, body posture. Yes. A fight or flight reflex, right? Under mm. threat. When you lean forward slightly, you're uh, telling your body you're going into fight mode. Mm. And the, the aggressive hormones come up more and you, you feel like you are in, more in command of the situation. Yes. And that's mm -hmm. led by the bad guy. If mm. you're leaning back, you're sending your body into flight mode. Yep. You're saying to signal your body, Get ready to run away, and that, mm. that signal of fear really, is the yeah. bad guy. So when I said that the officer reached into her pocket and took a fighting stance, what she did is take a half step forward with her support with her left foot, basically. So mm -hmm. she went. She didn't go and lean back and put her hand in her, in her fanny pack and get away, stay away from me. She put her foot, one foot forward, got in a shooting stance, mm. basically leaned slightly forward, not a lot. You don't have to exaggerate, but enough. And then said in a commanding voice, can I help yeah. her? You know, looked him right in the eye, you know, and then he was like the, the you know, he was alarm bells were going off. There's a cop, run. Yeah. Not short mm. ads, you're not same police officer. Blah, blah. Um, so have that, whole, you got to have the whole picture, the whole camouflage picture if yes. you're not a police officer or if you're not, if you're not actually armed. So the other thing is my wife is riding home at late at night. Uh, from work. When we first uh, moved upstate, she was still working in the city. Uh, it was a two and a half hour train ride each way on two different trains to get down to her work. Uh, and sometimes she had to work. Uh, uh, she was getting home at night, nine, 10 o'clock at night sometimes. So she gets on the subway and it's late and the subway car is empty. And she sits there, she has like a nylon attache case. She has a nice business clothing. Uh, uh, a tache case in front of her on her lap, right? These two uh, girls happen to be Hispanic. Just it comes that point is important in a minute. They look three of them. They look at her, and they go and they sit across from her, and they start whispering back and forth in Spanish. Wife doesn't speak Spanish, uh, and then they break off. The two end ones go to the end of the car and sit on her aisle side and start edging towards her. So now she's triangulated between them, right? A girl. Ooh. Her mm. and two guy, girls on either side. And but this was interesting. When the females did it, my wife was calm the whole time. When two males did it, my wife panicked after the event. But in both times, it was great the whole time when the event yeah. was happening. Stay cool. But as they're coming by speaking Spanish, and and you could obviously know she's talking about her. There's no one else in the car, and they move edging closer and closer, trying to intimidate her. They basically what I what they're doing is what any predators do, which is called a shark bump. Yeah, they're coming up and they, a shark. If it's not overwhelmingly larger than you, a lot of times the shark will bump the prey animal, see if it's still alive, and they'll take a bite. Right? Mm. So they were doing a verbal shark bump. They were getting closer. Mm. And closer yes. To how she react? Mm. She waited till the car stopped at the next subway station, reached into her bag, opened up her pocket knife, did not take it out. All they heard was click. <laughs> kept the hit knife in the bag and just looked at them calmly. They got like this. They all got to one end of the car and split apart. And then the next subway stopped, they all ran out. Jeez. I'll, yeah. give, you one more. I'll give you one more. An older officer was uh, waiting at a bus stop and he's reading a book and there's like a, a cone of a street light on the, over the bus stop. And look, 100, 200 yards away, there's another bus stop, right? The next stop on the bus stop line with another cone. And these uh, half dozen or so young teenagers or teenage guys come up, young tough guys come up, and they see they they can see them.
go over and accost this old man, smack him, knock him on the ground and take his wallet. And they start coming towards where the officer is. He's an off duty, right? Mm -hmm. And he's not a big guy. looks like an accountant, right? Gray hair, glasses, not me. This is a smaller guy than me. And uh, they come, and all the other people waiting for the bus stop take off running. He just sits there reading his book. He's like, oh, gee, I want to go home. I don't want to deal with this stuff. So the bad guys walk up and they see everyone run away except this one guy. And he's reading a book. <laughs> and hey, man, give me, and they stop. They don't run up and accost him right away. Now they're wondering, you know, the shark is wondering, is this animal alive? Does it still have teeth? Hey, man, give us your money. Give us, don't forget the cards, too. Come on, give us your money. <sighs> Turns the page of his book, keeps reading. I look some under over the glasses and look back to the book. Hey, man, you think you're bad. You're disrespecting us. Da, 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 da. They start verbally threatening him, but they don't get close. They outrange. He turns the page of his book, looks at him, goes back to reading. Now, you could, he said you could feel the temperature in outdoors go down with these guys. Like, Oh, man, you think you're bad. We're going to come back here, man. We're going to come back and get you. But they're backing up as they say this, and they walk away. Hmm. A lot of security people said, and he had a gun on him. He just didn't pull it out. He was, he was like, yeah. Yeah, I really don't want to deal with these knuckleheads, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's an experienced officer. You know, if they, he, he had a mental, which is another important thing. He had a mental border that if they took a step beyond that, he was going to draw. Yeah. And he yeah. knew what that border was, how long would it take him to draw? Mm. Mm. You know? So he was waiting for them to cross that border. So he dropped the book and, you know, and drop and, and draw on him. Um, so I, I have most of these in my blog, most of the examples and many of the examples. I'm not sure I don't have this one, though. But learn from pe experienced people what they did. Yes. Take the please take the legality mm -hmm. into consideration, guys. Take all three levels of the legalities into consideration. What the law says, how the judges interpret the law, yeah. how cases go to court, and how the district attorneys and the jury yeah. Look at it. Yeah. on your actions. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Think about if everything you did from start to finish were on video and audio, and the jury mm -hmm. and the judge sees this. How people yeah. who don't like knives or don't like martial arts or don't like you, uh, yep. uh, because you're different from them for whatever reason, right. right in the at that video. Mm. You know, take all that in consideration. Yeah. So, anything else, Dean? No, that was it. This was fantastic. Good? Uh, I mean, we went late, but. All, all good, good, good stuff. I mean, the comments alone and the likes speak for that. So what I do, like usual, guys, I'm gonna I download it. As soon as I, when I bring it over to YouTube, then uh, of course I will share it. Uh, although too long, I don't think I can share anything to your wall, but I'll put it in FMA discussion, um, and you can uh, pull it from there. And um, but yeah, but then you guys, you know, definitely you guys will have it for your own and all that. But yeah, I appreciate both of you coming on. I, I really do. I thought this is fantastic. And I noticed and, um, some questions, uh, like Richard Pacman has a question about coming out of your home and if you're not used to the environment. A lot of these questions we answered in the very beginning of the, yeah. the talk. So guys, yes. I mean, yeah, Richard did jump in late. Yeah, okay. go ahead, yeah. And, uh, go ahead and, and once it's recorded and you go back and look at the whole recording yeah. and look at Tom's website, my website, uh, and Dean, his archive of all these talks are really good. Oh yeah, and you too. Oh, yeah. So do your research, guys. Do your homework. Yeah. These benefits. But um, all right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I'm my. I have, a, I have a feeling this won't be the last time I see you guys on here. So. Uh, Good job, guys. You guys are always. If you guys are always willing to come visit, I always will be uh, sending invites out. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm retired. I got. Yes. You. <laughs> So I appreciate it. You guys, you guys have a good rest of your night and, and uh, you thank you so much again. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you to Hanvil. Thank you, Gorodin. Thank you, Tom. All right, absolutely. Thank Take care. Okay. Right out, guys. Good night. Good night. Or good morning here. <laughs> yeah, get some go go get some sleep, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do. see. All see right. ya. You be good.
<laughs> All right. Uh, Long one, but good. Um, so, yes, I'll be uh, posting that in uh, YouTube and all that. What's uh, Who's coming up next? Oh, uh, Her True Thursday, uh, Dax Williams. So we'll be finishing that up. And this is going to be a uh, – oh, and stay tuned for this weekend. It'll be a busy weekend. I think on Saturday, uh, Julius and Martin are going to be interviewing a couple of dog brothers, Philip Galinas and somebody else. And – Sunday, I have the 18th, um, FMA Pulse. So some good stuff coming down between Thursday and this Sunday, okay? So uh, you guys will see the, uh, the flyers and um, FMA discussion, all that. All right, all. Thank you for uh, jumping in, and we'll see you next time, Thursday.